Herzog Universe, let's do this. Let's summarize what happened on the Iberian Peninsula. There was actually quite some stuff happening. A uh, very interesting weekend overall with lots of uh, storylines that we can talk about. Uh, we will start in Spain and then I want to add on a little bit of Portugal because there were two uh, games that I think deserve uh, some note. And then the remaining leagues I will do in the next video. That's Italy, France, Turkey and Greece. We'll Put those in there. Let's start in La Liga. Um, didn't see much of El Alaves winning against A Bar. Note this is another Basque derby. Uh, that Alaves, we had two Basque derbies, Alaves winning. Uh, that one, we had also Levante beating Leganes early on 2 0. The first game that I made note of was Getafe's absolutely trampling over Valencia. Um, the first half was all Getafe and they didn't make any goal uh, but they should have made at least two or three Molina around the six it finally finds the breakthrough and makes it uh, shortly after 2-0 and the game was done and does it there was really nothing coming from Valencia Getafe totally um, dom dominating and um, very playing very well I always, I always thought that Getafe is playing boring no anything but boring they add a third one through Mata in the 87th and Fully deserving that win. Um, Real Valladolid manages a 1-1 against Villarreal. Uh, Atletico Madrid gets back to the winning track, but without being in any way convincing with a 1-0 over Granada. Then Espanyol in a... Shall I call it Catalan derby? Maybe. R.T.T. Dot dot Raul de Tomas scores and gets Espanyol a win again. And then the big derby Vasco between uh, Real Sociedad and Athletic Club uh, where in many ways forget about the first half. Uh, they did not play the strongest squads. I mean there was no Iñaki Williams who has been playing forever and that he's not in starting line was weird. There was also no uh, Isaac who was so great in the game against Real, Real Madrid. It was when they two came on especially when Isaac came on that the game totally changed. Isaac took uh, uh, Sociedad's game to another level. I think uh, Oedegaard did also not play. It was kind of, you know, everyone gearing already. There was the semifinals are looming. So that you then hold back for what probably the two fan bases considered the most important game of the year, I, th I found kind of curious. But it was really uh, Isaac who changed the game and... Um, Gave a nice assist to give uh, to Porto to give Real Sociedad the one 0 lead, and then you thought that um, Real Sociedad is gonna eat um, Bilbao alive. I mean, they had chances to make it one uh, two nil, and then one of those counterattacks where Williams is so um, deadly, he gets the equalizer in the seventy first, and you really thought, oh. This is not going to end 1-1. One, one. Is, 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 I always have the feeling the psyche of Sociedad is kind of a little bit uh, fragile. But no, Isaac gets the winner. Late in the game, Munain uh, is getting sent off. Deservedly so. It was an exciting game in the second half. Really a great game to watch. Um, also, sooner Real Madrid. I actually saw more than I thought I, I, I would, but to be honest, I didn't pay too much attention to it because uh, we did some work in the house and I actually was more um, focused that I will get free for the Bayern Leipzig and a certain derby in a city where I have a team that I like very, very much. Uh, also, Sona challenged Real Madrid and even took the lead. They had great chances to actually... Um, get to the lead uh, sooner, but in the 14th, Unai Garcia makes it 1-0 and actually forced Real Madrid to take the next gear. And it came uh, when a shot by Bale was kind of mid-hit, but and Bale playing again after his injury, finally sort of fit or is deemed fit. And the ball comes to Isco who really nicely volleys it into net, make it 1-1. And five minutes later, Sergio Ramos, who has been agitating uh, every player and got himself riled up, he seemingly needs it, free header, uh, makes it 2-1, and you know, Ramos celebrates only as Ramos can. So yeah, uh, was 2-1, and then... Uh, 
It was still an open game in the second half. I mean, there I saw quite some, and yes, you always had the feeling that Real Madrid can control it, but also soon is one of the, all those teams where they, they just need a, ch a half chance. But overall, Real Madrid had it under control, and they got the goal through Vasquez and then very late through Jovic uh, to make it 4-1, despite also soon hitting the bar. At the very end, it ends in a 4-1 for Real Madrid kind of convincing and putting the screws a little bit on Barcelona because you know with a three-point lead Barcelona being three points behind we need to keep winning and Real Madrid doesn't look spectacular but they look very good I think they they should be considered the favorites to win this title especially with the trouble that Barcelona is going through more Barcelona a little bit, a little bit later because we have another uh, super frustrating team to talk about which is Sevilla um, who had more of the game at Celta, but you know, Celta is, uh, despite being down there, kind of a dangerous team. And Naziri gives them the lead. They cannot make more out, 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 out of it. And you thought, yeah, 10 minutes to go, they will safely play this home. Nothing like that. Iago Aspas in a, sh in a shot from a very acute angle. And only Iago Aspas can do that. I always have the feeling. Makes it 1-1. One, one. And Yonesisto, who came actually on and that changed the dynamic for Celta de Vigo, he gets with a very precise shot the winner in stoppage time. And this was a win that Celta de Vigo desperately needed. And then we had the uh, big game that uh, in Spain, a big game, Kike Setien's return to Betis with a kind of, was a kind of an acrimonious split. Um, and it gotta be said. The interesting thing of Barcelona was that they didn't have as much possession or, um, you know, hawk the ball as usual. No, they gave up a little bit, but kind of got a little bit more danger. And they have been showing this already uh, against Bilbao. I didn't see both games, but I heard and from the highlights saw enough to see that Barcelona has a little bit more purpose to their game. But uh, it's still... I have the feeling that Setien is still fiddling with his lineup of especially how to play Messi and how to uh, integrate him with Griezmann the most effectively. Uh we will talk about Messi in a sec, but first of all, uh, Canales gives Betis the lead through a penalty in a game that opened up through that very much so. Frankie de Jong, uh, just a three minutes later, with, with a wonderful assist from Messi, and then the way he takes the ball and slams it into the net was really, really impressive. It was a great goal by Frankie de Jong. Uh, but Fekir, who was near unplayable for Barcelona, gives um, Betis the lead, lead again and could have done a whole lot more damage. And you thought Betis is going to the half with a 2-1 lead. No, Busquets uh, with his first goal of the season, again assisted by Messi, gets uh, gets an equalizer for Barcelona. And so it adds uh, with we goes with 3-2 into the second half. Uh, I found it interesting that Betis pulled out some purely green shirts with white pants. That's a look I haven't seen on Betis. I don't know if I want to say ever, but if I haven't seen it, if I have seen it, it has been a long while. But, you know, special jerseys. And I was surprised that Barcelona again plays in there with the sash. I like those. I just thought they will uh, pull out the Catalan flag jerseys again. But, hey, all fine with that. Um, Messi had chances and again he's not making chances but he is assisting many many goals i mean one story is i think what was it 27 shots messi has taken and not scored and it's not uh i saw it already uh, against bilbao there's a lot of chances where he should have scored against uh against betis he should have made some of those goals but uh, i i he even tried to replicate his wonder goal uh, that he made last year, exact same goal, exact same position against Betis, and it goes a little, a little bit wide, which kind of proves the point that you only hit this once. Uh, that way, even Messi cannot repeat uh, magic. But then he assists Langley uh, for a header to make it three-two. Should have been more comfortable for Barcelona, I have the feeling. But you know. Uh, the statistic on one side that he doesn't score is one thing, but when he creates three assists and he's kind of, he already quarterbacked uh, Barcelona to the previous win, 
uh, last week. So I think if this is a new role for Messi, all the better for him. You know, Ronaldo, as he got older, got a score goal scoring machine. Maybe Messi is now going a little bit deeper. This is his new role where he can with his uh, passing. Uh, which is still mega sublime, uh, set up others. And, you know, if he does it like with Frankie de Jong and uh, Sergio Busquets, all the better uh, for him. I, it will be interesting to see where Barca will be going. And I hope that the schedule line up that I can watch a full Barca game again. So in the table, we have uh, Real still three points ahead of Barca. Um, as long as it's three, three points, I don't say anything because Barca would have a Clasico in Madrid, uh, a game that they love to win. Getafe, second best team in the Madrid region ahead of Atletico Madrid with the win go up because Sevilla is losing. Real Sociedad moves up, Valencia goes down, so there's a whole lot of switch around. It still looks like the top two will uh, go for a title and the rest is playing for your European spots. Uh, Athletic Club is probably the first one where I say it might get tough to uh, get into Europe. Um, and then you have to go a long way down, I think, up until Eibar. This is kind of this no-go zone and then Celta, Vigo, Real Mallorca, Leganes and Espanyol. All are jostling for uh, the final saving spot. Celta Vigo has it at the moment, but there are three teams with 18 points. Very, very, very tight in there. Let's move a little bit further west to Portugal, um, where we had a few interesting results, most notably Family Cow, the great story from fall, is coming to an end. 7-0 loss to uh, Guimarães. They were 2-0 down, players sent off completely falling apart. Braga cannot really take uh, much profit from that. Only a 2-2 against Gil Vicente and then the big one, Porto against Benfica. I only saw highlights, but it was an amazing game. Um, right from, from the get-go, teams were going at each other with Porto always having slightly the upper hand. Yes, Benfica has a really tall lead, despite having lost the ga uh, earlier game to Porto already. Uh, Sergio Oliveira gave Porto the lead, but uh, Carlos Vinicius uh, eight minutes later can equalize. And then the game was really uh, at a tipping point and it needed a penalty in the 38 by Ajax Teish to uh, get Porto on top of things. And just uh, before halftime, really, I don't want to say sloppy on goal, but it was one of the ball he's sliding in there and it just goes in. Makes it 3-1 at the half for Porto. Um, and Benfica cannot really get back in the game. They get the early goal to make it 3-2. But then Porto controls it and runs away winners. Um, the other Lisbon team, Sporting, is uh, also winning. And so in the table at the moment, we have Benfica now only 4 points. And note that Porto took 6 points off Benfica. Benfica is up there due to the strength against all the other opponents. Sporting uh, with a clear distance, uh, 35, and then Prague and Family Cow is just dropping, 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 and we'll see where this will go. So this is my Iberian Roundup. Let me know which games you watched, whether you agree with the assessments of the games that I talked about. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.